guys. This is not Mass Effect 4. This is Mass Effect Andromeda. Before diving deep into the game and reviewing its many intricacies and challenges to the form, I think it's important to reiterate that this is not a sequel to the original trilogy. It definitely helps to mentally separate the original trilogy from this game as much as possible. The story beats, the companions and crew, the exploration, and the main adventure take on a completely different tone and scale from the original trilogy. While that's not inherently a bad thing, I feel that it's a very important thing to stress. Mass Effect 1 started as a baseline for the entire trilogy. Most of the characters started from humble beginnings, and that's just as true as it is here. As it stands, the game alone is actually fun, actually playable, and actually worth a damn. Let's go through the highs and lows of Mass Effect Andromeda together. If you would like to avoid spoilers, please do not watch the video, but listen. The script itself has minimal spoilers. For those interested in all the spoilers, I will be running a stream the same day this review releases, which will be held on Twitch at twitch.tv slash ladyinsanity at 6pm pacific, Monday, April 3rd. It will be a nothing held back discussion about the game. Mass Effect Andromeda, I feel, was made backwards. The ending for Andromeda was the most satisfying, the best well-constructed sequence out of the entire game. It was what I expected out of Mass Effect 3, in truth, any Bioware game. But all the quests that lead up to it are so winded, so awkwardly mismatched, and so tediously paced that I felt strongly engaged at one moment, and then absolutely disconnected for the next two. The main plot tries so hard to draw and command from its darker origins, all the while feeling sometimes disingenuous when coupled with the very happy-go-lucky set of side quests and loyalty missions that are thrown in. Don't get me wrong, the main plot itself is compelling. Most of the side quests by themselves are compelling, but everything feels so contained, so very contained in their own little bubble, where each moment has its own atmosphere that that emotional state isn't cohesive enough to coexist with other moments. This is also coupled when the romance is where, in one engagement, Ryder is overly confident and gets whatever she wants, and then in another moment, goes super awkward and kinda creepy. Despite the four different responses that players can use, the story beats maintain a very specific personality of Sarah Ryder or Scott Ryder, and can feel incompatible with your actual writer. That, on top of the whole writer is a preset of numbers 1 through 10, makes it feel like writer is less of my character and more of a template where I need to fill in the less significant details. A lot of it, I feel, is greatly influenced by this strong directive to share a story so centered on the human curiosity and exploring the unknown that in order to deliver this very specific theme, Bioware was willing to sacrifice some player volition in order to hone on the central message of Explorers Wanted. But this doesn't fare too well, of course, with hundreds of thousands of players who were built on the foundation of Paragon and Renegade, where everything is mixed into one hero that was allowed to be an angel or a devil behind closed doors. Moving on even further, the transitional cutscenes for intergalactic travel were unbearable. It didn't help that these long and windy cutscenes further hindered finding the few quests that are only found through finding random anomalies throughout the galaxy. Exploration became a chore, where jumping back and forth between hubs felt impractical and time-wasting. Oh, you have a quest that goes from the Nexus to Kadara? Well, first you watch the Tempest leave the Nexus, then the travel sequence to the Kadara system, then the approach to the Kadara system, and then you finally watch the Tempest's descent into the Kadara atmosphere. And none of this is skippable. You know what I do when I have to change planets? I eat food. I play episode. I look at my Twitter. My attention diverts everywhere besides the game itself. Sure, it's... It, it's supremely beautiful, it's, it looks absolutely gorgeous, but 
it quickly becomes tedious. And it's unfortunate because in these moments, my attention is completely driven off. But on planet, I'm having fun with the gameplay, switching from a pistol whipping turret gal to a space ninja. I'm laughing myself half to death because I'm trying to drive the nomad up a cliff. But the moment I realize that, oh crap, I have to leave the planet to continue on another quest, it shifts from fast-paced fun to monotony. On side quests, however, I do have to give Bioware a lot of credit, as they improved tremendously from the original trilogy. To quickly summarize, the quests are categorized as the main plot, allies and relationships, Helios assignments, and additional tasks. However, even some of these seemingly non-essential tasks scale up. They have more resources to work with and more content to reward the player with. Additional cutscenes, voiceovers, you name it. Even some of the quests are initiated by drive-by or simply exploring the galaxy. Of course, there's some fetch quests that are obvious experience and credit grabs, but in most cases, there's a lot of quests that at least build character for the Helios cluster, the galaxy, and its denizens as a whole. Further, another improvement I have to applaud Bioware for is the codex updates that span throughout the entire game. The codex updates where you are relationship-wise with all of your companions and your crew, and even shows off some of your psychological profile written by Dr. Lexi. There's a lot of guesswork taken out. If someone hates you, the codex will say why they hate you. If someone loves you, the codex will say that that character loves you. And that helps out a lot when trying to diffuse your way throughout the galaxy with big decisions, whether you decided to help a key character or if you accidentally locked yourself in a romance. As far as the Tempest crew, honestly, they are the glue that kept Andromeda together for me. And to no surprise, Jal being the clear winner out the entire set for having the most appealing story and perspective. But really, each one felt believable. No one ridiculously out of range or too fantastical to either identify with or appreciate. Each had their own background elaborated, connected with squad mates and NPCs on varying levels, and owned their own zest and personality that was never duplicated onto any of the other rest of the crew. My main concern here, however, is the lack of direction there is with most of the crew. While each loyalty mission was geared to make each crewmate figure out their purpose in Andromeda, or tie up loose ends, I felt that there was a lot of uncertainty. If Andromeda has a sequel, the question there is if Ryder or the crew will be back, or just like Dragon Age, the companions will be filtered out. Not every person is meant for greatness, not every person is going to become the new Admiral or Shadow Broker in one installment. But if this is what you get and they're not coming back, I'll definitely feel a bit disappointed for what I thought were rather compelling characters. If you ever played Dragon Age 2, maybe even like Dragon Age 2, then let me tell you that I like Mass Effect Andromeda for almost all the reasons why I like Dragon Age 2. Despite its technical issues and shortcomings, such as not all the cutscenes having facial animations fine-tuned, or the Nomad Shield quest bug that literally prevents the player from gaining 100% story completion, the game itself feels supported by its stronger elements. For me, those are the characters, those are the romances, and the protagonist's choices playing out all in the same installment. The ragtag band of misfits that you lead, how they're supportive of each other, or they're ripping at each other's throats, the protagonist's casual demeanor and humble background, and having visual representation of some of my more serious choices now rather than in Andromeda 2. Despite the glaring technical issues or the problems in scale, both games are enchanting in their own style. Overall, Mass Effect Andromeda is a beautiful, hot mess. It doesn't have the same dark and life-altering story beats as the original trilogy, but 
it's an entertaining adventure of a game that has charming characters and stupid beautiful worlds and ridiculously over the top combat. I think once the game is patched up a bit, I think it'll be worth every penny. My name is Ash, thank you for watching. If you liked this review, be sure to like. If you didn't, or you have a very different opinion, let me know in the comments section below. And if you really want to get down and dirty with spoilers, be sure to join me on Twitch when we talk about everything in full-fledged detail. But until then, thank you for watching again. I'll see you next time.